everyone, it's Narelle here from Cricut Explore Maker and More Facebook group and I'm here today with another assembly video for one of our projects from our Let's Get Festive uh, event in the group. So we're up to day six today, this is the day six project. Now there hasn't been a video for every project because some of them haven't needed it. Um, but this one, just with the folding involved in it, I just thought I'd do a quick video just to show you how to do that. Um, it's a really quick card to put together, but um, just a few different folds there that you might just need a bit of a hand with. So the card is called a double pleated card. So I'll just give you a bit of a closer look there. So you can see that it's all, all the different pleats here. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. All right, so I have my pieces here. I've started assembling some of them. So I've uh, got my card base. Um, I've got these two uh, layers here. Now this time on this one, I haven't done anything to that white layer, but on this one, I've actually used an embossing folder and just embossed that um, white piece there. So that's ready to go uh, and be um, adhered to the card base. Um, I have my sentiment here. Um, this time when I did it I used uh, red Cricut uh, glitter card stock for this red piece here and this here and then also this little strip here. I just thought that just gave it a little bit more sparkle to the card. So there are some of the pieces already assembled, ready to go. So all we have to do is just fold this piece here. So what I've got is one here that I have folded. And this is what this one's going to look like. Now, when you're selecting paper for this um, piece from the card, you can just use regular um, double-sided coloured plain cardstock so it might have one colour on one side and another on the other that's fine you can do that um, printed paper or pattern paper like this does look really nice especially if you're say I'm using a Christmas pack from um, Kaisercraft for this one um, whatever you do choose just make sure it's not too thick because if you use something that's um, extra thick it just makes the folding part a little bit harder but it also this um, without putting some extra glue in there which I have done with these is if you don't really stick it down well it wants to open again so um, but if you use a, a less thick or a thinner uh, double-sided paper or cardstock it's not going to be as bad but it just means that you just have to use extra um, tape or glue to get this to, once you stick it down for it to stay there. So that being said, we'll go on to the folding. Now again, being pattern paper, it's hard to see the score lines. I used the maker, so I used the scoring wheel on this. So I did get better score lines than I would if I just used um, the stylus. Um, but again, it's pattern paper, so they're hard to see. So what you will find um, when you go to grab this file is that you'll also see a link to a PDF or a photo of a PDF that has the folding instructions in it. And it just shows you which are mountain folds and which are valley folds. So what we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and we'll just start folding. Now, what you will find is that you've got two uh, two score lines that are both mountain sorry both valley folds and they are your first ones from the center so they are both going to be valley folds and what I tend to do is because I scored on this side is that I go ahead and I fold valley fold on all of them first and it, it just it's just easy to fold that way it just tends to like to do that so I'm just going to go and do that so I'm just looking and I'm, I'm actually just putting this um, towards the light in a way that I can actually see that score line and then I just fold there and then I can just fold all of those and once I've done that I can then go back and fold them the correct way so and I just put my nail in there just to give it a so I know exactly where that line is and then I fold and I think that that's all of them I actually I might have one more 
and that's right there. So I've done that. So now what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll fold them the correct way. So the first one was valley, the next one is mountain, and then it just goes basically valley, mountain, valley, mountain. So we've got valley. This one now becomes mountain. This one stays valley and this one becomes mountain. So what I've then got is this shape. Okay, so now I just go and I do exactly the same on the other side. So you can just do the same thing there, go and fold each of them as a valley. And you can get your um, scoring tool or bone scorer out and give these some really nice crisp folds, but it's actually not that necessary because we want them to have a little bit of, um, I just want them to pop up just a little bit and not be totally flat. So nearly there. And now that I've done that, I'll go and fold them all the correct way. So my first one is valley, the next one is mountain, then valley, mountain, valley and the final one is mountain. So now what I've got is this. Okay, so it's not going to stay that way if we don't put some glue or tape in there. So my suggestion is to turn it over oh, and that's one other thing that I, went, I wanted to say to you is when you go to, uh, when you've selected your paper you need to decide which uh, which side you want to be the most visible. So you can see in this one here, um, and this was a piece of Graphic 45 Christmas uh, paper that I used, the colour that you have at the front here is, the, is, the, is what's going to be the most visible. So you can see that it's down on these little pieces here, that's the other side of the paper, and you're not really seeing that much of it. So if you want, if you wanted this to be the bit that was the most visible, you would have turned it over this way and then started all your folds that way. So then these two, you would, would have been, you would have done your valley, mountain, valley, mountain that way. But I wanted this to be the most visible, and that's why I did it that way. Okay, so now we're going to turn it over and we're going to just grab a little bit of glue. And um, I've got the Art Glitter uh, Dry as Clear Adhesive here, so I'm using that one today. Um, and I just put, and you don't need much, but I'm just putting just in this, this fold piece here where it's going to to sit onto the next piece, I just put a little bit of, just a, a small line of glue there. You don't have to overdo it, but the good thing is that if you do overdo it, you won't see any of the leaked glue anyway. So I just put a bit of glue on each of those pleats. And I need to do the same thing here. And then just give those a bit of a rub down so that they attach. And then you're going to just turn that around and do the same thing on this side. So I'll just get those set in the right position. And then I'll just pick that up. Pop that in there. That in there. And then the last one. Okay, just give those a good rub. We just want that glue to take. Okay, so now that's what we've got there. So you can see it's still it's going to roll at this point, um, but that's okay because it's going to be stuck onto this piece here anyway. So the question then is, what do you stick that with? You want some strong glue or? Um, say red tape or any of those double-sided tapes, something that's nice and strong because you don't want it to come off because if it comes off it's going to curl like it does there. So um, for this exercise I'm just going to stick with this glue here 
and that is the layer that's going to go on here. Now you don't, you could go and do the same thing here with putting glue in those bits there, but I prefer it, I, and I did that on this one, but I actually prefer not to do that because it just gives you, it just looks better without having it stuck right down. It just gives it a little bit of, it pops up just a little bit, and I just think it um, just gives it a bit more texture. You can see the difference between that one and this one. And I really do think that, especially if I bring that up a bit closer, um, it just I think that this one just looks better, the one on the left. So I'm not going to put glue in those, um, but I will be putting it on the back here. So um, again, pick whichever um, adhesive you prefer, whether it's liquid glue or whether it's tape whether it's um, red tape, any of those, and then just pop this up the way that you want it to appear. Now this actually has a bird on it, not that you can tell that, but I'm just going to put that up that way. So you pop that in there and you're basically centering it so that you've got equal space around all four sides. Make sure it's straight. Again, let that take. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is pop these two pieces on. So I'll pop that one on there, and that fits within um, the white section. And then what I do is I just make sure I put it center um, that way horizontally, so that, or vertically rather, so that it is just nice and neat. So I'm just going to pick that up so I can see that. Make sure that it's straight. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one, I'm actually just, I'm going to use some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals and I'm just going to pop that one up. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So basically I'm just needing them to go along the centre here. Should work. I could put some there, but I would need to probably double the height of them there, and I'm not just not going to bother. So let's just get rid of these pieces. Pop that on there, nice and straight. I just line the center of this piece with the, the center of that, and then try and judge it this way. Again, I just need to pick that up so that I can make sure I've got it straight. And there you go. It really is a quick card to put together. Last thing to do, obviously, is to put that piece onto your card base. Which is what I will do now. Again, just try and make it nice and straight and it's sized so that you have a little uh, border around the four sides. And now what I'll do is I'll just give it a rub that way. And there you go, a really quick but very effective Christmas card. So I hope you like that one. What I did on this one, and, and it's um, part of the design space file that I am sharing. Um, it's used Season Greetings and that's a free sentiment from uh, Design Space. It's free for everybody. You don't need access for that one. All the shapes are um, done from free shapes that I've just welded and all that sort of business. Um, so this card is totally free for you to make. You can obviously detach the text from this white shape and put your own text on there or just uh, detach it and don't write on there at all and then you could just stamp your own sentiment on there or put another picture or whatever you like on there entirely up to you so there we go there's those two cards ready to go in the post so I hope you like that um, do come and check out all the projects that we've shared in the um, 
Let's Get Festive event. Um, we're, as I said, up to day six at the moment and there will be 20 projects um, in all, plus a few bonus projects that aren't part of the giveaway. But yes, we are doing a giveaway. There will be a prize at the end of the uh, 20 projects. In fact, you will have until the 15th of December to submit all your projects. Um, I really look forward to seeing them. So hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thank you.